uh, orthopedic department with the help of me, and it's about the outcome of surgical correction of torsional deformities of the femur. I want to start with a short repetition. Um, as you might all know, uh, after birth, children have a high and elevated femoral antiversion, which is described between 40 and 50 degrees, and during growth and um, until the age of 10 to 12 years, this high antiversion will decrease up to the normal value as we consider 10 to 15, or as we heard, 20 degrees of femoral <coughs> antiversion due to muscular forces or the velocity when the children learning to walk. If we talk about coxa antitorta or a high antitorsion of the proximal femur, as we heard before in the several talks, we mean that the femoral neck is orientated far anterior compared to the coronal plane of the distal femur. And this allows an excessive uh, intorsion of the hip. If we talk about coxa retrotorta or retrotorsion of the femoral neck, it's vice versa. The femoral neck is orientated more horizontal or parallel to the distal femoral condyles. And the torsion of the femoral neck lies under the number of 5 to 10 degrees. Talking about anti-torsion or coxa anti-torsia, torta, it's often combined with valgus deformity, as we know from hip dysplasia, and it's predominantly in a female population. If we look at the range of motion, as we heard before as well, we have an excessive internal rotation of the hip and in decreased external rotation, as you can see here. Here, the uh, clinical picture of the patient we saw yesterday before surgery, two years before at the hip symposium. She had a 60-degree internally rotation, which we usually see in patients of the age of five to eight years. Professor Siebenrock and his group described the impingement that results from this high anti-torsion in a 3D computer model in 2013 where you can see that the posterior impingement takes place intra-articular in the posterior superior neck of the fem proximal femur with the posterior inferior acetabulum or extra-articular between the lesser uh, troch with the ischial tuberosity. In the retroverted uh, proximal femur, it's vice versa. You have an excessive external rotation. You have a decreased internal rotation. As you can see on this clinical photograph of this patient, we will see his x-rays later. And the impingement, as you can see in the 3D animation here, takes place in the anterior portion of the femoral neck, mostly intra-articular, but sometimes extra-articular as well, as we heard uh, yesterday, between the greater troch and the ilium. So knowing that this deformity of the proximal femur can be another reason for developing FAI, we conducted this study where we wanted to look how patients come after surgical correction of this torsional defor deformity. We wanted to analyze the hip function and pain and subsequent surgeries and complication in these patients following surgical correction of torsional <coughs> deformities of the femur. The design of the study it is a retrospective case series. We have 18 patients included with 21 hips. They had torsional deformities of the femur. 95% are female. The mean age at operation was 26 years. The mean follow-up was four years, and the exclusion of three hips because of <coughs> neuromuscular disorders were done. One patient died for an unrelated cause. Most of the deformities, as we heard before, because the incidence is higher, was antiverted hips, and one hip had a femoral retrotorsion of two degrees. What did we measure preoperatively? We did, additionally to the AP pelvis and lateral pelvis, we did a CT scan, the proximal and the distal femur, and then we measured the uh, angulation of the proximal femur, the method, as we heard before, from the level of the lesser troch to the center of the femoral head to the um, coronal plane of the distal femoral condyles. We animated this uh, CT in a 3D model to see where the impingement takes place. And then, as, uh, as published from Moritz and his group in 2007 already, and then from Pulse in 2010 and 2011. 
The surgical correction was a derotation in the antiverted hips in 20 cases and a rotation osteotomy in one hip to increase the femoral antitorsion. The location of the surgical correction was in 10 cases intertrochanteric and in 11 cases subtrochanteric. The derotation averaged about 22 degrees, 15 to 35 degrees, and the rotation osteotomy was 15 degrees. The varus correction was averaged 16 degrees, and at the beginning of this uh, maneuver we used the blade plate, and then later on we used the pediatric LCP plate. If we want to perform just the rotation, then we used the 130 degree plate, and if we wanted to do an intertrochanteric osteotomy, we used the 110 varus plate. We looked for the patients who had previous surgery. These were nine hips, 43% of our study group. They had hip arthroscopies. They had acetabular osteotomies. They had several surgical hip dislocations. And one patient had a various intertrochanteric osteotomy. Concomitant surgery to this surgery was in 10 hips offset correction, five hips with periacetabular osteotomy, and one hip with combined periacetabular osteotomy and offset correction. The outcome parameters were for hip pain and function, the Melody Obini score, the anterior and posterior impingement test, and of course the range of motion. We looked at the subsequent surgeries in the, uh, the chart review, and we looked for the complications according to Sink et al. If we look at the results, we had a significantly increased Melody Obini postal score from 13 to 16. We had a significant improved anterior and posterior impingement test, we could see that the range of motion regarding external rotation decreased from 44 degrees to 37 degrees. This was not significantly. We saw that the internal rotation decreased from 54 to 25 degrees, what we expected, that this was uh, significantly. And the flexion decreased as well from 110 degrees to 98 degrees. That this was not significantly. Subsequent surgeries and adverse events, we had 16 hips that needed subsequent surgery, 15 hips had hardware removal, one hip had his hip arthroscopy with off that offset creation. Five hips had complications, one had a conversion to a total hip, and one hip had a pseudarthrosis, and three hip had hip arthroscopy due to atheziolysis. You can see here an example of a male patient where you could, could see the clinical picture some slide before. He's 36 year old. He has pain and slight flexion and internal rotation. You see the CT scan. He has a femoral antiversion of only two degrees. We did the animation model and we did surgery on the subtrochanteric level, did the offset creation and he was pain free. This is another patient, 16 year old from my clinic. She has coxa valga antitorta with a slight dysplasia. We did the animation of the CT scan. You see 50 degrees of anti-torsion. Shenton's line is broken. So we decided to do an intertrochanteric osteotomy with 30 degrees derotation and 15 degrees varus, and she was pain-free on the right side. And we plan to do the surgery on the opposite side in a few weeks. Coming to the limitations of this study, this is a very short follow-up period, one between 1 and 14 years. The mean is 4 years. We have a very low number of patients. And of course, this is a retrospective case series. And also, pre many patients had previous surgery before, so this is a quite heterogenic group. So it's hard to make a real conclusion. But anyway, our conclusions are that torsional deformities of the proximal femur can cause or can be another cause for FAI. The surgical correction of these torsional deformities can result in pain and improve, uh, in, uh, in improvement in pain and hip function. And these procedures are associated with a lot of complications. 25% is a little bit high, but maybe this is because of the low number of patients uh, taking place in this study. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm.